Hello and welcome to UC Today. I'm Senior Editor Tom Wright and today I'm joined by Jonathan from Adopts. Hi Jonathan, how's it going? Tom, hi, lovely to see you. How are you today? Yeah, very good, thank you. So thank you for joining us. Um, and we're going to be talking about WebEx today, but before we do that, could you maybe just give us an overview of kind of your role at Adopt and your track record, I suppose, of working with WebEx? Yeah, sure. So I've been in and around the, the Cisco Collab technology for probably more, more years than I care to remember. Um, I actually used to work for Cisco a long time ago. Um, I've worked for um, a customer of Cisco. I've worked for a partner of Cisco, Adopt are a Cisco partner in our own right, but we generally work with other part other Cisco partners, largely around sort of change management and adoption practices, really ensuring that people get the value out of the technology that they bought. Because, you know, whilst there's loads of cool technology out there, just throwing technology at people and expecting them to use it, you know, isn't necessarily going to drive value from it. And if you don't drive value from it, then what's the point, okay, in terms of you're not realizing that investment. So so my role here is I'm the digital collaboration lead at Adopt. I'm very focused on the Cisco um, portfolio. I'm a WebEx expert as part of their WebEx ambassador program, which means they send me nice T-shirts. Look, I'm all branded up, just like you're branded up for you. Yeah, we're looking today. good today, aren't we? So, um Obviously got a bit of a track record with UC today in terms of we've done a number of these. So really, um, really great to have an opportunity to connect again. Cool. OK, so, yeah, we're going to be talking about WebEx. Cisco recently launched what they're referring to as the new WebEx suite. It's kind of the second relaunch, I suppose, of the last few months. We had the all new WebEx at the start of the year as well. Um, so what's changed this time around? Well, let me turn the question back on you. So, so you wrote an article on on, on UC Today that I said, did. you know, here's a here's a what, what do you what do you think they did? Um, well, I don't want to say it was just a new logo and a new font, but uh, on the face of it, that was kind of a. I suppose that was the the biggest launch. They, you know, they're going to be rolling in some of the acquisitions as well. But yeah, no, it wasn't the most newsy um, relaunch, if I'm honest. But um, that's why you're here. Tell us what you see. Yeah, no, no, I think I think that's fair criticism, right? I think that's the um, I mean, the, the event itself was was billed as this sort of hybrid event, um, you know, hybrid made real. I can't even remember the tagline, right, that, that, that Cisco put on it. And I think that, you know, obviously hybrid work, future work, the new norm, you know, actually for all of us that are involved in the industry, we're getting a bit bored of those terms, right, in terms of, you know, as we, everyone's talking about it, right, everyone's got a slightly different take on it. But fundamentally, it's, okay, look, we're going to get start. People are going to start going back to the office. Probably work's not going to be the same as we as it was before. Um, we're going to have uh, differences in terms of you know. Whereas Cisco came out with some some stats during the event that you know pre pandemic eight percent of meetings had a had a, ro a remote participant. Post pandemic is going to be ninety eight percent. Right? Whether you believe those stats or not, it's probably going to be somewhere in in between that. So you know, it was billed as this sort of hybrid work e event okay but actually um you know i think the, the the core to what they were trying to get across was that during that during the pandemic you know i think that people made you know that was thrust upon us nobody nobody knew it was coming you know one day we're all working normally the next thing oh my word what's happened right and and a lot of companies scrabbled to keep the lights on so they made you know what cisco call a pandemic decision right so they might have thrown some technology at people um, set people home with their laptops and go, there you go, get on with it. You know, we need to keep the, the lights on, keep going, right? And I think the the focus of the, the event was really to try and get people to, okay, we've been through that. We've made that pandemic decision. Now, maybe we need to look at a strategic decision, right? In terms of, okay, we, we've kept the lights on for the last year, 18 months, however long or whatever it is. We're going to enter this new phase that's going to be different, going to be difficult, and therefore, maybe there are things that we need to consider differently than we did consider during the pandemic phase where we're just trying to keep the lights on, right? So I think the, the, the key drive for Cisco is, and the key thing that they're trying to get across is you need to take a, you know, if you haven't looked at WebEx for a while, take another look at it because there's lots of good stuff in there that potentially is going to help this new era that we find ourselves in as we find as we move the, re the return to work so you know that at a, at a high level it would be my takeaway how good a job they did of that with the event i'll leave that as an exercise for the reader right you can go to youtube and if you search hybrid event and cisco you can watch two hours 
of, of, of them talking about, you know, what it is that they're, they're trying to do. And I think as part of that mission statement, if you like, then we've come up with another new logo, right, for WebEx. So now we have, you know, and I'm sure they've spent millions of marketing dollars on coming up with a new logo. You know, I'm a techie. It doesn't really float my boat in terms of, hey, we've got a new logo, but hey, we've got a new logo, right? And it's pretty and it's green and it's blue and it looks like two jelly worms together in the shape of a W. Okay, fine. That doesn't fundamentally change what the product does. But, you know, I can see why that that branding is important to them. Um, and basically, again, I think it's really the encouragement to, for people to take a, a, a new look at WebEx. So is there a sense in the market that maybe there's been a bit of a missed opportunity here for WebEx? Because it's obviously a very established name, very well known. But all of a sudden, kind of Teams and Zoom have come from nowhere um, and seem to be the, the platforms that everyone's talking about. Shouldn't it be WebEx, really, that was that is that name at the top? I think everyone would agree that that there's a missed opportunity here, right? And and again, I think you know you can look back and and go, okay, there was a missed opportunity, but actually that's not going to change. That's that's in the past. And I think what what Cisco's focus is now is is trying to look forward. Okay, um, I do think they they missed the opportunity in in uh, during the the pandemic. I mean, I don't think you know neither Zoom or Microsoft you know came out of nowhere. They've been around for you know for a while. But but Zoom undoubtedly won the the PR you know war during the, uh, the, the you know over virtually overnight it became the verb right and and you know even to you know much as a Cisco fan you know what much to my uh, my surprise you know you would even see news articles of you know so and so uses Zoom and they'd have a picture of somebody looking at a Cisco endpoint right and it was sort of going no no it's not Zoom it's it's WebEx right and it's sort of and I think. You know, and this is one of the things that, that Cisco are going to have to try and, and turn around is that the, the they've got this sort of reputation of, hey, oh, yeah, WebEx, I heard of that. Isn't that something that was around in the 19 blah, whatever it was, you know, a bit clunky, a bit old, a bit boring, a bit enterprise, you know, and hey, here's all this new funky stuff that actually delivers a load of value. And, you know, we should be be doing that. And I think that's why this relook at WebEx is is a vital thing, right? Because I think the, you know, I, I would say over the last, certainly over the last two years, I've seen Cisco do things with the WebEx product that maybe, you know, they wouldn't have done previously, right? In terms of, you know, they've modernized the user interface. It looks like a modern product now, right? It, it, it was, unless you use training webex training but we'll 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 steer away from that for the moment if you use the meeting and events experience right it is a it a, a modern user interface it's got lots of the features that you would expect to see in there which again being a slightly a person of the slightly older generation right i look at and go do i really need emojis in meetings why do i need emojis in meetings or reactions and all the rest of it and actually um I'm a bit of a convert for those types of features because I, I do a lot of training with our customers, right, where I might be talking to 20, 30 people, training them on, on um, some, some new technology. And I don't want to unmute everybody's line and get any feedback, but it's great to get a thumbs up, right, from people that, you know, I make a point and they go, yeah, that's good or, you know, and actually that does create the engagement. And, you know, I think some of the previous times I've talked to you guys about, you know, I think where Cisco are really strong is looking at that, engagement during the meetings right in terms of okay how do we how do we engage people because again you know it's very easy in this this new era that we're we're living in for people to join a meeting switch the camera off put themselves on mute and go back to what they were doing before before right you wouldn't dream of, of you know in in the real physical world sitting in a meeting room and put a paper bag over your head Right. And, and then carry on, you know, doing it right. It just it, but in the virtual world, that's easy to do. So how you create engagement during the meeting and how you reduce distraction during the meeting. You know, in, in, when we're in an office, we close the office door. The windows are double glazed. The air conditioning's on. It's not whirring away. We don't have. And, and you know, you have that meeting discipline of people know when to talk and, and not interrupt people. And in the virtual world, we don't have that. So engagement and distraction are those two two things. And I think you know Cisco are doing some great stuff around you know improving that that experience. Yeah. So obviously, we're not trying to be completely negative here. Like you say, there is a lot of good functionality in there, and they've made quite a few acquisitions recently to bring in new features. Um, 
what is it that's caught your eye at the moment? So along that, the theme that I've just said, really, OK, in terms of that engagement and, and distraction piece. So um, I think the, you know, where Cisco, so a while back, Cisco um, basically delivered or sorry, basically acquired a company called Babel Labs. And I did a, a, a session for you guys on that. I'm sure that's not still on your website, right, in terms of that background noise removal, right? And that's now been... Um, you know, to Cisco's credit, they acquired Babel Labs and they integrated that technology very quickly, both into the WebEx sort of desktop experience and into the endpoint experience as well, right? So the ability to take out that background noise reduction, right? Again, particularly when you're working from home, you know, hey, the sun was shining the last few days. It's not shining today, right? But if I've got my window open here because I don't have air conditioning at home and somebody, you know, my next door neighbor starts mowing the lawn and I'm on a call, I don't want to shut the window and, and roast in, in, you know, my little room here. Um, I will tell my neighbor, oh, wait, can you stop mowing the lawn? I'm on a call. You know, it's sort of like so noise reduction is a, so that that Babel Labs acquisition. Very good acquisition, I think. They integrated that technology very quickly into the into the portfolio. And actually, one of the things that they announced um, during the event last week is um, a sort of an enhancement of that um, that capability called My Voice Only. Right. And there was actually a, a video demo of that. I don't know whether you saw it during the, the event where, OK, as we move back into maybe uh, that open office type environment, I maybe don't want to sit with a headset on. Right. I want to be able to, you know, to be able to talk like I'm talking to you today. Um, but there are going to be people talking in the background. Right. Or if I'm at home, I might have, you know, I might myself and my wife might be working at home at the same time or the kids are here or whatever. Right that you don't want me speaking and some noise going on in the background. So that my voice only feature, I think, is a is a key, um, you know, it's an example of just continuing that um, sort of that theme around, OK, let's keep distraction out of the meeting. So Babel Labs was, was you know, an acquisition that was made a while ago. But I think that my voice only feature really, you know, hit home to me in terms of the, the announcements that they made recently. I think the other one that if I would switch it to the engagement theme, would be Slido, right? So um, the Slido acquisition um, that's now closed, um, I've actually, we are on a um, uh, one of their early uh, adoption sites, if you like. Um, I, I was playing with it only the other day, right? You've now got that Slido capability integrated within the WebEx client. It's not a separate, you know, let's point my, my phone at a QR code and then I can interact with it on the phone. I can still do that, but I have that Slido integration in that um, in the WebEx experience. That means I can do polls, I can do Q&A, um, I can do word clouds. The, you know, that, I don't know whether you've seen Slido or whether you've looked at it you know, previously prior to the Cisco acquisition. There's some actually pretty cool features there, right? Okay, in terms of, again, okay, for a larger audience, how do I keep people engaged? How do I make sure people have a voice in the meeting, right? If there's 20 people in the meeting, I might have two or three vocal people who want to speak. But what about the other 18 people, right? And I want to bring, make sure they have a voice in the meeting, even if they don't have, you know, they don't want to speak in the meeting, if you like. So that Slido, you know, acquisition, I think, is, um, is, is really key as well. And they're doing some other things like Socio, they, you know, they've been actually an intent to acquire Socio around the whole events piece. And I think, you know, I'm starting to get confused about the Cisco events platform. It's sort of like, okay, how many event solutions do you need, right? Okay, but you know, there are various different, you know, they would segment it into things like webinar, you know, where you, the, the traditional, maybe smaller, you know, web type experience, the webcast that's maybe to a larger audience, and then really a focus around that hybrid events. And I think, you know, we haven't yet seen what they're gonna do with Socio, but it'll be, you know, interesting to see was where, where they go, you know, what path they go down there. But the two I would I would call out right now would be, you know, what they've done with Babel Labs and that my voice only, and the the Slido acquisition in terms of, um, you know, that engagement. Because frankly, polls, I don't know, you know, again, whilst they put Q and A into meetings recently, the old Cisco sort of Q and A, polls and Q and A in the WebEx experience was pretty old technology, right? And and again, in, on the theme of modernizing it and making it more usable and engaging, I think they've done a good, you know, Slido has done a good job and Cisco are doing a good job of integrating that technology into the platform. Okay, and then my final question for you, Jonathan, we're almost halfway through the year now. 
what would you like to see from Tisco in the second half of the year? Um, what would I like to see from them? I, 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 I'd like to see consistency of experience, right? I think the, um, you know, one of the the strengths of Cisco is that they've got all of these different pieces of the puzzle, right? They've got the endpoints piece, they've got WebEx, they've got hardware, they've got software, they've got control hub of that, the, the analytics and all the rest of it. They've made these uh, acquisitions that they've got, right? Just bring it all together, right? And I think the, you know, and that's, Arguably what they're doing, it just takes quite a time to get to that point, right, to bring it all together. And I think that is one of the um, the, the challenges that um, Cisco have in terms of they've got a lot of legacy stuff and therefore to do new stuff, they can't just forget all of the legacy and move forward. And that, that I think, has inhibited the speed of some of their innovation. I, I sense that they're they're less worried about that now. Okay, they're now, okay, let's focus on that innovation and drive that. And so I want that consistency of experience. I don't want, you know, to be able to do things on an endpoint, but not do things in a WebEx meeting, right? If I join from the WebEx client, I want to be able, now, admittedly, okay, it's going to be different devices, so you're going to be subject to, to some of the limitations there. But, you know, for example, I, I you know, I was on a Cisco meeting uh, not so long ago, and I joined from my shiny WebEx Desk Pro endpoint, and I was joined the meeting, right? And the and the guy, the Cisco guy on the call went, and if you've got any comments as we go along, please enter them into the chat. And I'm going, I immediately put my hand up and went, hang on a minute, I'm on one of your endpoints. There is no chat, right? I don't have a chat capability here, right? Now, how do you solve for that problem? Hey, I'll leave that to mine's immeasurably superior to mine, right? But the the idea of Users, I, I, and I spend a lot of time talking to my users about, uh, talking to customers and users about adopting this technology, right? I end up confusing myself sometimes, right, about the WebEx experience about, well, okay, if you're in this and you're doing it this way and the moon is in Virgo and there's a D in the day, it works like this. But if you do it this way, it works like this. And I'm going, Okay, I'm having trouble remembering that, and I live and breathe this stuff. You know, an average user is going to go, I don't care. If it's that difficult to use, right, that's going to cause me a problem. So that, you know, I want, when I launch the WebEx app and I press the green button in the WebEx app, I don't want a separate meeting experience where whiteboards might work but not work. You know, um, I, I want that consistency of experience. So I want them to to do that. I want them to focus on that. They've been talking a long time about the unified app, you know, now just called WebEx with a new logo. Hey, hey, good stuff. Um, but I want them to, to make sure they deliver on that and deliver, you know, the new stuff with, that's, you know, and again, you would, one could argue it's table stakes, right? But, you know, we know software is complex and it's always going to have bugs and all the rest of it. But, you know, whatever you deliver, make sure it's fully thought through. Make sure that it's robust, that it works. There aren't little annoying nuances right in the in the technology that make the impact to the user experience and to be fair to cisco i think they've spent a lot of effort actually addressing some of the user experience challenges right and the other thing that i really want them to stop doing and thank goodness they stopped it at this last event was stop using meaningless marketing phrases that deliver nothing right and, you know, I'm going to say it right back in the last year, there was all this talk about 10x better than being there. OK, I have no idea what that means. Right. And should it be 10x or should it be 10 times better than being there? or whatever it is? Right. And actually on that hybrid event, you know, Chuck Robbins, they had an interview with Chuck Robbins, the, the CEO of Cisco. He went, you know, hollow taglines do more damage than good. And I think that's a great example of a hollow tagline where somebody thought, hey, this is a great idea. Let's have 10x better than being there. It means nothing, right? Stop doing that. Focus on your strengths. Deliver quality product that delivers, you know, against that strategy that you've outlined. That's really what I want to see them doing. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm sure we're both going to be watching WebEx closely over the, the coming months. But um, thanks a lot for joining us today, Jonathan. It's great to have you back. A pleasure. Absolutely. Always, you know, always enjoyable to um, to talk to you guys, you know, um, and as I say, I'm going to bring a, you know, a, a Cisco slant to it. But hopefully, you know, um, you know, I'll bring the, the good and the bad with it. But, um, you know, I think the 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 portfolio is is really good. I, I do. You know, I think it's interesting, actually, in this hybrid world that we live in now. All right. Is that the 
you know, if I take today as, a, as an example, right, I was on a Microsoft Teams call this morning, right? I'm using the whatever, you know, the platform that you're using today, right, to, to do this. I've got a, a, a Zoom call with a consumer brand, you know, later on today, right? I will undoubtedly have a WebEx meeting with some of my colleagues, you know, during during the day. So there's no, we live in the world where, you know, it isn't just one technology all the time. And that's going to be a challenge for the users, right? I think because, you know, even though we as an organization might use WebEx, we're going to get invited to other people's meetings who are going to be Microsoft Teams or Zoom or, you know, whatever else. And I think that, is a challenge as we as we go forward but what it does enable you to do is actually compare and contrast the experiences right so you know and i will you know this experience has been great you know whatever platform it is that, that you're using and i won't advertise that here right but the but you know it's been fantastic right but the you know it comparing and contrasting that in terms of the video quality how it works how the audio works and the rest of it you know from a technology point of view i'm interested to see that and I do think Cisco are really strong in that, right? The, the, the video and audio quality that you get with an endpoint in a Cisco WebEx meeting, I honestly, and, you know, again, I would say this, but I do think it's second to none, right? And, and then you get into the whole nuances around is good enough, good enough, or not good enough, you know, and, and that's probably a topic for a discussion for another day. Okay, well, look, thanks again for joining us. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you enjoy this video, please give us a like and a share on social media and we'll see you next time.